Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be going through how to install Ubuntu 20.04 server on VirtualBox. So let's go ahead and start up VirtualBox real quick. And in here, we'll go ahead and create a brand new virtual machine. After clicking new, we can go ahead and type in some type of a name. I'm just gonna call this Ubuntu server and I'm gonna say 2004 here. So I know which one it is. Following that, you can specify where you wanna keep the virtual machine at. Mine's home savvy Nick in the VirtualBox VMs. I'll keep that. You'll make sure to select Linux for your type. And then the version, we're gonna use the 64-bit version. Uh, the best emulation would be through Ubuntu. So we're gonna select Ubuntu 64-bit and hit next. Following that, we'll specify some amount of RAM for the virtual machine. For me, I'm gonna go with around eight gigs since I have plenty here. Let's just roll it to there. And now I'm going to be sharing eight gigs of RAM between my host computer and this virtual machine. Uh, make sure you're not in the red or orange here. You don't wanna starve your host machine of memory. And uh, once you specified a good amount, go ahead and hit next. You'll wanna keep it over about two gigs in order to run Linux smoothly. Uh, let's go ahead and create a new virtual disk now. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the default option, hit create. And the default hard disk file type is VDI here in VirtualBox. I'll keep that and hit next. I have dynamically allocated or fixed sized physical disk. Well, I'm gonna choose the dynamically allocated because that'll save some space because it'll grow as the system grows instead of a fixed size where it's gonna go ahead and allocate all the storage space right away. With the default selected, I'm gonna hit next again and I'm gonna use around 32 gigs here. I recommend with most Linux distributions going with at least 32 gigs. I've had issues in the past going anything less. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit create. If you're new and stopping by to watch and install today, please make sure to subscribe below and hit that notification bell for future Linux and programming videos. All right, now that we have Ubuntu server here, 2004, I'm going to make this a little bigger so we can see better. We want to change up the settings before hitting start. So let's click on settings. And in the settings, we'll wanna to go to the advanced tab. If you wanna share your clipboard with the host and virtual machine, I usually like to. You can go ahead and set that up here, either both ways or your computer to the virtual machine. That's the one I'm going to select under system. I don't care about running a floppy controller, so I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck that one. Everything else, I'll keep the same. And then down here in the extended features, I'm going to enable the EFI mode because most new computers now run EFI instead of legacy MBR BIOS. So I like to emulate it with EFI checked. All right, as far as processors go, I'm going to give it uh, two cores here. You can specify however many you want. I have 16 cores available, but I'm not going to give it too, too much here. Um, just make sure you don't starve your computer and you're not in the orange red here. Following that, I'm going down to display and I'll keep everything the same here. In storage, I'm going to go ahead and select under the controller IDE, I have this empty CD-ROM here, and I'm going to go ahead and click on this little CD here on the right-hand side, and I'm going to choose a disk file. That disk file is going to be the Ubuntu 20.04 Live Server AMD64 ISO, which you can get from ubuntu.com. Here on the ubuntu.com website, you can simply hit download, and under download, you'll see Ubuntu Server. The default image is the one that I have downloaded, so you just click on 20.04 LTS, and it will begin downloading here in a few moments. Of course, this is the 64-bit ISO, so this is for a 64-bit computer. Make sure to go ahead and save the file anywhere on your computer. Just remember where, and that's the file you'll be using in the last step. All right, and once you have it downloaded and selected here, we can go ahead and hit open. And following that, you can go through audio. I like to disable audio. I don't care for it between the two, but you can keep it enabled if you want. As far as network goes, NAT's fine for us. That'll share the network across both computers and that should be good enough for me. I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK. And at this time, I can go ahead and hit the Start button on the newly created virtual machine here. So after I hit Start, I'm going to be asked, do I want to start up the currently selected disk, which is the Ubuntu 20.04 live server? Yes, I do. So I'm gonna hit Start, give it a few moments here. And the first thing we wanna select is the Install Ubuntu Server. And that should start the installer here. Give it a few moments while it gets things ready. All right, and if everything loaded up properly, you'll get this screen here, which I'm going to go into full screen mode, doing control F and just switching over. All right, here we can select the language you wanna run through the installer with. So I'm going with English, just press enter. 
Following that, we can go ahead and update here to a new installer version, or we can go ahead and continue without updating. I'll do that after the fact, so I'm gonna go ahead and continue without updating the default and press enter. Next, you can go up here and change the layout of your keyboard if you want to. Just press enter and then the up and down arrow keys allow you to change to the layout of keyboard that you use for your specific territory. Go ahead and select one and press enter and then also select the type of variant for the layout. You can also hit the identify keyboard where it tries to automatically identify the keyboard for you. Otherwise, you're ready to go down and press done. On this screen, DHCP4 tries to go ahead and take advantage of automatically setting your IP address for you. So I'm going to go ahead and allow that. As you can see, the ENP0S3 is the adapter that was given to our virtual network adapter. Otherwise, you can go ahead and change this as well. If you press enter on here, you can actually edit the IPv4 or IPv6 information. Let's say I wanted to edit the IPv4. You can change it from automatic DHCP, so pulling down an IP address automatically from your router, to manual or even disabled if you don't want to use internet at all. If you select the manual method, you'll be able to go ahead and put a subnet, a unique IP address, a gateway, and some name servers if you need. I'm not going to do this, but just know the options there if you need to set it statically. So otherwise, uh, everything's good here, and I can go ahead and hit done. You're asked if you want to use a proxy. I don't, so I'm going to leave it blank and hit done. If you want to use an alternate mirror, here's where you can go ahead and enter that alternate mirror but I don't have one, so I'm going to go ahead and use the default mirror here for me and press done. At this point, we are going to partition our virtual machine's disk. As you can see, we have the 32 gigabyte disk selected here. There's no other ones to select. And next is whether or not we wanna set up this disk as an LVM, so that's logical volume management, which will allow you to manage your storage space a little easier. I do suggest using these for virtual machines. It just makes it a little easier in the future if you need to go ahead and resize your virtual machine past the, the 32 gigs. So with that selected, I'm going to go ahead and hit done. You don't necessarily have to use LVM, but I will and I'm going to hit done. Following that, we're just given a summary of our file system here. It says it's going to create three new mount points and a new EFI partition on this local disk that we have selected. You can see here that it's creating a new device called Ubuntu Volume Group. And then you can see how the volume group is laid out down here. All right, so if you're happy with everything, you can go ahead and press done. And here is just warning you, hey, I'm about to go ahead and erase everything on the current disk so I can partition it and continue on to the install. Uh, as long as you're doing this in the virtual machine, you've created a brand new disk with nothing on it. So you're ready to continue. And now you're asked for a name. I'm going to use Savvy Nick for myself. My server's name, I'm gonna use Savvy Nick as well. And my username, I'm using Savvy Nick. You can use whatever you want. Make sure to go ahead and type your password in and confirm that password. Once you're ready, you can hit done, which will create a user for you. Now you're asked whether or not you want to install the open SSH server package. This will help you remote into your computer, which might not be a bad idea just because this is a headless command line interface that you'll be running after the install. So if you wanna get in remotely, you can use SSH to do so. Otherwise, you don't have to install the package. You can just simply ignore it. And I don't want to import any kind of SSH keys right now, so I'm going to go down and hit done. Here's a nice and interesting way to go ahead and download and install certain packages that pertain to the server edition uh, you can also get these, of course, with the desktop edition as well, but these are all nice server packages that are available to you. Uh, if you wanted to go ahead and, let's say, just install Microsoft PowerShell right away, you can by just hitting the spacebar, which will automatically check PowerShell, and then uh, whatever other things you might want. Uh, I don't need anything right now. I'm keeping this as minimal as possible because I'm going to be installing my own stuff on there after the fact, so I'm not going to check anything. If any of these packages look good to you or you want them right away, go ahead and select one and then hit done. At this point, the system will start installing and it's gonna take a few moments. All right, once the system's installed and all updates are good, you'll go ahead and hit the reboot button, which will reboot Ubuntu here. And you might get a error that says failed unmounting the CD-ROM, no big deal. Just press enter to remove the installation media and that should reload VirtualBox as well as Ubuntu. 
All right, and once the messages have stopped scrolling across the screen, you can press enter a couple times, and now you should be able to log in if you type in your username. So I created a user called Savvy Nick, and then I'm gonna type in their password. You'll then be loaded into the newly created Ubuntu server system. Congratulations if you made it this far. You've successfully installed Ubuntu 20.04 server, also known as the minimal version, here on VirtualBox. All right, and one other thing we'll wanna do in order to make sure that this install is complete, let's go ahead and install the VirtualBox guest editions tools. So we can do that by going to the bottom here and selecting on devices and clicking the insert guest editions CD image. Go ahead and click that. All right, and let's go ahead and do sudo mount and we'll do forward slash dev forward slash CD-ROM. And then we'll put another space here and I'm just going to mount that on the MNT directory. So forward slash MNT. If we press enter, it's going to ask for our password. And we can see that the device is currently write protected, but it is mounted as read only, which is fine for us. Let's go ahead and make sure that everything mounted properly. We can do this by doing LS dash L. And I'm just going to do that on the mount directory. And now we can see that we have a few options here inside the mount directory. And what we want to run is the VirtualBox VBox Linux editions dot run file, which should be fairly easy. Let's just type in sudo forward slash inside that mount directory MNT forward slash. Then we'll type in VBox Linux editions dot run and we'll go ahead and press enter. At this point, the system will try and install the guest editions on the system. And if you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button. It really does help me out. And we got a little error here actually that says the system currently is not set up to build kernels. Please install a few things to go ahead and build the kernel. So we can do that. Uh, let's go ahead and do sudo apt install and we'll get the build essential package. That should give us most of the stuff that we need here. So we'll hit yes and then just give this a few moments. All right, and let's go ahead and try again running that sudo mount vbox linux editions that run. See if it works this time. And it looks like things are going well right now. It's taking a little bit of time. So this usually means that it is trying to successfully install the modules. Very good. Now it says a virtual box guest editions running kernel modules will not be replaced until the system is restarted. So we have successfully installed them. We just need to restart the system. If we go ahead and do sudo reboot, We'll go ahead and start restarting the system here for us. And after the restart, we should have those VirtualBox guest editions installed on the computer. Very good. So we can log in again, Savvy Nick here, and then password, and that's it. You're ready to go ahead and use your system however you'd like. I hope you enjoyed this installation tutorial of Ubuntu 20.04 server or the minimal version of Ubuntu on VirtualBox. If you did, please make sure to go ahead and smash that like button for me. And also make sure to go ahead and subscribe below. Hit that notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. Thanks for stopping by today and I'll catch you in another video.